the first mm -hmm. and third. Yep. So I don't know if LGD want to take Dire away, potentially, if they win the coin flip, or if they're content just playing Radiant a third time. We'll have to find out. There's a wrap loading up right now, so why don't we go ahead and head into it, and we'll see if Game 3 is just going to be as exciting as Game Number 2. It's LGD versus OG. I think it's going to be really on. tough to see the same excitement in, in this Game 3. Oh, is ES going to get through? LGD. First picks on OG. Yeah. Ooh. So they are going to ban Lone Druid, right, based on the first two games, Wiss and what? Lone Druid. Those Earth Spirit ban. We have Earth Spirit ban, Io, oh. Lone Druid, Dar Darkseer. Those were the yeah, four that's, bans of the game that's so what I'm far. Yes, it's going to get will, they will take a Earth Spirit on the side of OG if available, I feel. Crit's very, very But good. don't you think they'd rather play the Lone Druid instead of Earth Spirit? Wouldn't you rather play Lone Druid against Lone Druid? No. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, say. they would rather play against Lone Druid because <laughs> they didn't ban it. <laughs> So ban on the Earth Spirit here, we'll see. They are going to be going right for the Lone Druid now. Earlier today, OG did play it in that uh, mid lane for Miracle, but... That's actually such a good opening from OG, though. Because they're basically saying, like, Ench is actually fairly good against Lone Druid. Good at killing the bear, good at focusing down high health heroes, and they can heal. Obviously, Untouchable is good against the bear, too. It makes the hero, I think, quite strong, just by having, uh, like, forcing them to ban the Earth Spirit as well. How, how do they generally run the Lone Druid? Do they play it mo mostly mid or off lane? For this team, because I haven't watched most uh, their first series. It was mid before. It was mid before. Yeah, it was right? mid before, but yeah. that is unorthodox for not just any team, but for OG. I mean, Lone Druid potentially can, can, can go anywhere. anywhere. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I think it's just totally lineup oriented. And LGD is going to pick a support that deals with Lone Druid Bear mm -hmm. fairly well. If you go for Maledic at level 1, there's a good chance if you're paired with the right hero, you can kill the bear at level 1. Also, one of the more played heroes for, uh, for LGD. Invoker is also still out there. We can get that precious Alacrity Bear on the side of OG if given the opportunity. That's good. Yeah. That's true. No Kalan Miracle both play. And Moon can get that Legion Commander, Ben. We'll really have some fun. Yeah, I love LC. I would you, love to see it. Do you say Iron Talon? <laughs> Reserve time. GG though, we'll have to see. They're gonna grab up the nature's prop. Here. They had the, they had a similar opening uh, when I saw them pick Prophet uh, yesterday. But RTK, he he went for like Mech on the Prophet early, and it didn't seem like it worked really well. I feel like Prophet nowadays it's like really important that you go for the build that allows you to be like a heavy right kicker early. It's like you phase like every game. Um, Blame is fine until you go now. No strong no drums that you. I think that build is one of. Yeah, it's probably the best build, and it allows Prophet to be really useful in the early stage. So I'm not sure what build he's gonna go for this game. And that Rider is a really good hero versus Prophet. Versus uh, because you want to catch him, and yeah. he's always gonna be speed pushing. You want a hero that's able to follow him, hunt him down, and catch him. But they make it a trial ban. Because mm, it's Prophet Witch Doctor, so they, they might be worried about a fast push. I'm not sure, like maybe worry about fast push and LGDs on Dia this time. I think it makes Prophet really scary to have trial as well. Like with Teleport Gank, like with Witch Doctor in that lane, it's very easy mm -hmm. to kill, even like most durable offlaners. The other thing too is it could be very early 5 men with a drought. Like we saw, I think it was, um, was it Alliance the other day who was running a drought lineup who were like high grounding at 15 minutes or like 14 minutes or something like that? LTD ran it today, right? Uh, that was against Fnatic. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that timing is actually even faster than Lone Druid and Bat can do anything. Like, you might yeah. be able to get a, a lasso, but it, it's super fast. I didn't mention, uh, didn't see much from the Chen, but the Chen will be banned out. And earlier in the, uh, in the series, we were seeing an OG or even a team to pick up the Chen. They have ran it a couple of times here. It looks like three times coming into the scent, but LGD making it better safe than sorry, and then OG getting rid of that pesky Siler like it. It's weird that you, they don't ban any Batrider counters, though. Normally, you'll see at, at the very least Venge banned, mm -hmm. and then considering LGD's you know r tendency to pick Rubik, uh, would consider Rubik as a potential ban Oracle, but LGD doesn't seem to run Oracle that much. I think but they are much more worried of the overall strike because you look at their two bans, Drow and Lycan, are two cores that would allow LGD being on the dire side to abuse the Roshan like better. So I think their plan was just to make sure that LGD doesn't get a lineup that is very strong at taking that objective more. What about going for like the Night Stalker now if you're LGD, which is typically um, very it's, good it's against still good. Yeah, it's still really good versus the bat, and you know, it's a Chinese team. Like we, we it's saw, a DDC hero. Yeah, sure. we saw from all the games, like the Chinese teams tend to favor the position for Iron Talon, Night Stalker, which Ben loves a lot. I don't love that one. 
You don't? Not that one. You're an Iron Talon fan. Not a support, Iron Talon. Off lands. Off. <laughs> he wants the greedy your choice. He doesn't want the support. He's that farm. <laughs> Very popular pick for LGD. In fact, their top two picks coming into this event are Witch Doctor and Night Stalker, both with 18 matches, both with 13 and 5 records. Do, do you like OD this game? Good versus the bear. And oh, it's so good. Good versus so the lasso because you can prison the target. Yeah, that is really good. And also, um, I'm surprised we haven't seen a little bit more Ursa as well. Against Lone Good? Yeah. Because you can uh, enrage the entangle. Yeah, but Savage Roll is actually super good versus Ursa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And I think Ursa kind of needs a hero who can open for him. He needs at least one reliable disable. Ask is okay, but... Um, Weaver is also good versus Lone Druid. Yeah, but I think Weaver kind of struggles with the timing of Lone Druid, because at the time you're going to start getting pushed, Weaver still maybe only has just the Lincolns, and that doesn't really feel like a, a strong team fight oriented here. He also gets owned by Root Roar. Root Roar is, like, really yeah. disgusting. So we said Venge is a good hero against Bad. Why does it take so long? For them to pick it. Well, they're probably just thinking about how they want to prioritize. Like, picking both of your supports gives away a lot of what your lineup can yeah, actually but do. I, I think the other thing is also because you want to use up all your time. You don't want to use your reserve time, but you want to use your. They used all the reserve time there. Oh, they use it on reserve time? Yeah, yeah, 20 yeah. seconds or something. Maybe they were just deciding on another hero like Oracle or Bench in bad. And they decided they wanted Bench because of the rush. But there are so many reasons why they're actually spending this time. It's very yeah. hard to know. As ben was ben it's like not banning those typical counters to Bad Rider. This had to be something OG were expecting. To put priority in banning out the Drow and the Lycan over this Venge? Maybe you'd be afraid that... I wonder, yeah, OG, you're like, it seems a bit too yeah, obvious. Yeah, it's, it's too easy. <laughs> too yeah. easy to the, Well, they could also be thinking whether or not they want, want to run Core Venge. Or, yeah, possibly. Or oh, support yeah. Venge. I think that's... My, have, because, you seen, have you seen a call bench yet? I don't think so. Uh, but if, if you don't have a drow, like if you don't have a lichen, I think venge is probably I mean, a good replacement the, for the that. next best. Yeah, if you want to run that sort of. I mean, there's still a track. Luna if you wanted to do that, but obviously venge is better. I yeah, Luna's harder to lay. So, Lasso target number one. <laughs> yeah. I think you just have to go Dragon Lance if you play against Bat now as Luna. Second the, shaker of the uh, tournament. Isn't it third? Oh, you get paid one game and the other game they pit. True, of course, yeah. actually. This is the third game. Third yeah. shaker of the tournament. But where is this other shaker going? I mean, it's it feels like a support, but um, we know Moon Shaker is also something they I like to go for. I think it's possibly that uh, they are going to run. I think more likely to run a shaker spot. They're going to help the off lane, which is a bat. I think they might actually do the same thing. Put Miracle on the Lone Druid because he takes the hero that requires the most farm. Seconds. Just Three judging seconds. by their uh, history of the way they run the heroes, and Earthshaker will just help the bat seconds, in the off lane to get levels, or... I'm not sure, like, I think that's more likely to happen. Instead of running Calm, Earthshaker, then Bat Rider goes mid, and Lone Druid safe lane. A very LGD typical LGD, LGD lineup. Mm -hmm. Last time uh, OG went for the Earthshaker Lone Druid, they had a Weaver and Lion together with it, and a Bat as well, so they had Lone Druid, Bat, and then instead of uh, Earthshaker, they picked Lion and, uh, and Earthshaker I'm, Weaver, so... I'm, I'm, I'm liking the LGD draft now here. It's really good for Roshan. Seem pretty well rounded at this point. Just he's setting up some sort of frontliner for the team. They have really good lanes too. Like they have good lanes, good support. Like if you run bench and witch, witch doctor as support, just in case OG runs off lane lone druid, these two supports are also really good at dealing the bear. Like they they are ready for any possible scenario, any laning phase that OG is gonna throw at them. What do OG now look to here? Their their first three, obviously, as we mentioned, has plenty flex, plenty of flexibility to go behind them. But now that you see something like a Jug come out and LGD's pretty well rounded start, they will be going once again, as Shiver mentioned, the, the Lion. We need that own Druid Bat Rider combo earlier. This gives them like an insane amount of catch, actually. Link Shaker. They, they needed and the burst mm -hmm. as well. Like when they lasso one target, they needed a hero that can take out. So they had uh, they had Weaver as the last pick in the. Ten. Well, with this, with the exact same. Yeah, lineup, I think if they're running Lone Druid and Bat as core, they need a, they're gonna need another core that doesn't need too much farm. Otherwise, it'll be too slow for them because Lion at some point is gonna need a core to ditch the lane so he can actually farm the link. Which one would you like? Which, uh, which one? Hmm. Um, was pretty good in the laning phase, and you don't really need the support to actually babysit you that much, so it definitely fits their their lineup. Maybe if you can also go for something like uh, 
fast pace. Like you're not a carry like a panda. Like I know OG runs like panda safely and sometimes or night stalker or beastmaster. Like you put no tail on another tempo control so the lone druid can farm more map. But I'm I'm not sure. But I I still think that we were could fit their lineup. Yeah, either. Not like amazing against Bat, but we make Roche so easy. I mean, LGD can still put the jump mid. Sure. Has been the trend lately. Yeah. I mean, especially if he's gonna be up against a lone druid, they're gonna assume that as the. Five seconds remaining. How greedy they wanna get, though, honestly. If they think that they can get away, because right now it's Earthshaker line. There are two supports. They are really weak at pressuring. They are good at, you know, carrying their own lanes and getting levels. You wanna get levels on lion, especially. So it's not so good at pressuring the enemy. So LGD might be thinking because they have they start of weak supports, so you might be able to get away with another like a heavy core and put the jug mid. Yeah, so they're gonna do that. Jug is gonna go mid and they're gonna have another position one core. So because they think that OG can't really pressure them right now. Where's the weakness now in LGD's trap? The first thing I think of is this does feel a, a bit greedy. Yeah, but how are OG gonna pre like pressure? Like they can't because they only did that because they saw the two supports, Earthshaker and Lion. We know that crit is so mobile on this Earthshaker though. I mean, they can they can yeah, definitely make something happen. Who's he again. setting up a kill for? They can't, yeah, they you can't, can't kill. Ten seconds. I, I think they have to, to be like level five. I think they need to draft equally greedy though. Yeah, they need to go for five they need PLAM like, something. Yeah, something like that. Morphling's also still out there. And and Jugg but Juggernaut might be. Ah, able to... ah this is this is nice. Still this is good. Blocked by the Fisher. It's okay. equally good. Greedy, like you guys suggested, and it's really good versus Juggernaut because of Shadow Dance, you can dodge the Omni Slash. Um, but but I think still still the laning phase might be a, might be weak. I'm not sure though, because LGD still has really strong lanes. It doesn't nearly seem as obvious as game number one, and even game number two, we knew that LGD had thrown together a, a better draft for themselves, but now it's down to the pinnacle moment. Game number three, as we get hopped into it here, what do you think? We had to make predictions for the final one. Who's going to be walking away into the upper bracket at the main event? And what team's going to have to go through another best of three to follow? We'll start with our close by couch. I actually heard suggestions that there should be maybe the rating couch and the dire couch. Um, I, I guess clearly this, don't like it. All right. I think this remaining. game I'm going to be the radiant couch. All right. By that radiant I mean, couch. I think, uh, I think I would have the better chance. I really like Slark matchup against Juggernaut in particular. The hero actually really just can't do anything against Slark when you get to later stages in the game, and I don't think it's going to necessarily easy to high ground OG. And OG is a team that performs very well when their their backs are against the wall, as we know from the Frankfurt Major. So I don't think they're on tilt. I think they they I think they got this. I think LGD has very good lanes, so and they're on dire. They can use the Roshan to their advantage. So LGD. Then, before we send it over, LGD. LGD, that's okay. a, a split a piece there. So let's find out exactly how it's going to pan out right now. We'll send it over to our awesome casters right now, Capitalist and Blitz. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you, Coddle Guy. That's right. Game number three now between OG and LGD. And we've got one hell of a draft on both sides. OG developing that early lone druid where we're looking at both lone druid and bat rider we know there's still a carry left in the pool it's a lot of like mid to late game cores but lgd matched that by putting the juggernaut mid here and going for the late game specter blitz our analysts were pretty split there on uh where they were going to lean towards i couldn't who's hear gonna it. win this series are, are you really going to base your prediction based on who actually said what can i guess was winter on the panel Yes. Did he say that LGD was going to win? Of course he did. Of course he did. <laughs> He's a BTS caster, so <laughs> that means OG's got this, like, in the back. Well, I don't know. Gods did say OG. What did Ben say? Ben said LGD. Oh, that's this was too easy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that took no thought for me. I was like, OG got this. All right. Oh, apparently that's going to be uh, Blitz breaking the tie and saying that uh, our analysts as a whole are going to be predicting an OG win here. But we'll see. There's definitely going to be some slight issues here. Uh, Winter was talking about how the fact that the OG supports are not the greatest being able to perhaps pressure, and that's why LGD were able to do something like a mid-juggernaut. Do you see some potential weakness here in the um, in the laning phase for OG? I think so. You've got Moon's got to get a lot out of this laning phase uh, because it is a Spectre. 
and his just timing fairly well, but I think OG is going to be just fine. We saw how effective Shaker was in the previous games. I think it was mm -hmm. against uh, Archon. Obviously, it's a different level of competition, LGD versus Archon, but still, yeah. crit is crit. And Moon already has uh, pulled the creep wave to himself at top. Gets the first four CS to the game, I believe, which is tops in a game quite well for himself already. Get the Gets that critical level, too. Meanwhile, middle lane, no tail, is matched up against a melee. Of course, it is a melee that is better adept at dealing with a bat rider, as uh, maybe he can always spin if the bat rider gets too many sneaky napalms and starts fire flying over him. Moon, is he going to be caught here? Still has his savage roar, so seems uh, unlikely unless MMY. He does manage to get the stun. The roar back, Siler is not going to be able to get any more damage, but the uh, supports still get the right clicks in. DDC will take that first blood. I still sort of think that Moon's going to be okay with that because uh, Wave was in a weird spot anyways, plus uh, he's just going to respawn and get up there. He's got the bear available too. And more importantly, he wants to keep all three supports up here for as long as he possibly can. I know that sounds weird. It sounds like I'm making like an excuse for his death, but uh, in most regards, that's what you want out of your offlaner, to force right. both supports to be up there at all times. And now at the mid lane, as the supports can't be there just yet, maybe he's going to be in a unfortunate position. He was forced to use spin there as there was just too many sticky napalm stacks, so he is going to have to sit back a little bit uh, unless the supports can come forward and gank for him. But it seems unlikely. Uh, can't really. I don't think they can really go for the gank. I just don't think they have the damage without uh, spin being available. And no tail in mid lane already has his bottle, so he's doing just fine for himself and. Bottom fly is just continuously pulling as uh, ROTK is just trying to grab the creep wave over to him. Ritz, is he actually going to go for a block off here? Yeah, he is. So those treants are going to have a hard time. Looks like they should still be able to pull. Oh no, the fissure is actually going to cause some issues still with the melee creeps. Uh, they're actually going to be able to take out these treants, so the creep wave goes back and less fury on. Oh, ROTK he actually snags it with one more right click. And we'll be able to keep those two treants pulled back to him. This is funny how both offlaners essentially have the same kind of um, play style from the offlane position where they just have some sort of pulling ability to get creep waves to their favor. That's what makes them tier 1 offlane heroes, yep. right? In the Nature's Prophet and the Lone Druid, the fact that they can kind of get the safe farm. Mm -hmm. There's almost nobody else that can really do that. Remember, there was a time period where bounty hunters were doing it, but that time is gone long and past because now everybody plays it as a four position there is a bit of difference between these two offlaners though if anything it's um the nature's prophet who's a little bit more of the aggressive of the three cores that they have <laughs> meanwhile uh the lone druid is obviously much more of the carry type offlaner um what are the kind of differences of play style that's going to be offered because of that i think rotk is probably just going to look to get aggressive around the map a little bit more than uh, well you're seeing it up at this top lane He's actually going to gank up the enemy offlaner with the help of his two supports. MMY still going to die, and that will be evenly distributed among the raiding heroes. Yeah, and Fly's going to TP up here immediately because he doesn't want all of this to go to waste. But uh, the good news for OG is that, yes, Moon has died twice, but Miracle is getting free farm on this map. And this time around, he has, I think, a better core than Jug. I feel like the weakness of Jug is, especially because he went for that SNY build, he was never really able to transition fast enough or like he wanted, mm -hmm. but with the hero like Slark, I, this hero is a monster, especially against Venge and Witch Doctor. Those are like the dream supports if I'm a Slark. Do they really have any ways to deal with him later on into the game? I feel like they don't. Uh, no, not really. It's kind of interesting though, this play by No Tail. So they were pressuring up that top lane really early on. They just killed the lone druid. He doesn't have a bear when he comes back. Um, the one support that came up, the Lion, wasn't going to be enough to really stop the push, but No-Tail actually makes a full rotation up the top lane. Is is this the idea? OG, are they going to be trying to stop any of these early tier 1 towers going down by moving the Batrider uh, in front of these pushes, essentially? I don't think so. I think it was just one of those one-off scenarios okay. where he was walking up there anyways. Uh, he, the Whoa, there. that Omni Slash didn't stay on the target. Crit was just far enough forward and was lucky enough that maybe Omni Slash actually bounced back into the group wave. No Tails stacking up so much for himself, too. Uh, this should be the moment he fireflies is after he signate palms it three or four times. He's got the other side, too, to contend with. And this is going to boost things up quite quick for him as the creeps can't really do too much in this scenario. I'm going to go down... Like, the most agonizing way possible. Yeah. Yeah. Deltail's copying a lot of damage for this, though, but should be able to get all of them. 
It was neatly. I was about to say, maybe it was because of the number of troll camps. There was a lot of range creeps there, but why do you think he didn't try and, like, pull up the other camp, like the mid camp that was also stuck? I don't think he would have been able to kill it, but probably was worth the damage at least, right? Doesn't matter too much, though. Uh, he'll get soon enough, and it's not like it's the difference between him and his blink dagger anyways. This maybe... Not on the to maybe. Go for this top rune. No tail picks up the bounty rune. Is going to be able to get into the trees, but Siler is pursuing thanks to that blade. He's still going to be able to get off the lasso and is actually trying to keep Siler on the cliff, but it's just not quite enough. That dagger does give the movement just long enough for Spectre to be able to get back down the cliff, gets the kill on the Bat Rider. That was a costly ultimate, but well worth it for a kill on a core. Yeah, that's pretty big for them though. They were able to. The Bat Rider Moon is effectively shut down. Of course, we know what Lone Druid can do with just a little bit of space, and it's hard to say means too much, but should be okay for now. And um, again, Miracle is in every single game that I've seen OG play. Seems like they're okay with these kinds of trades cap as long as this guy's getting absolute tree farm. Yeah. Ever since we turned away from the um, meta where we had these really farm dependent mids, like um, the SF that was so popular, and Miracle was able to get that kind of guaranteed farm there. They've been putting a lot more priority on these sort of miracle safe lane heroes. And Lark definitely seems to be one of them. They're running this like dual core now where No Tail just plays the enabling hero mm -hmm. and allows Miracle and Moon to kind of play the one two punch. Yeah. But he's already got the Midas picked up for himself. Aquila's going to follow shortly after, not even bothering to get boots because he's not really interested oh, in fighting. Nice block off. The Omni Slash is not going to be in range. That could have been a real quick kill on No Tail. Then. He actually refills his bottle with the bounty ring, or the, excuse me, the arcane ring. So, what does that, what does that actually take it down to? Sticky Napalm goes down to like 2.25 seconds or something? Pretty good. Sounds ridiculous. Miracle hops away. He's level 8 already, so obviously LGD can't really do it. Unless they get a really full rotation and surprise him in the jungle, but I don't think that's what LG are looking for. I think they're, yeah, trying to grab the Bat Rider while he's doing his stacks. Maybe he's got the Omni Slash available to himself. This should be enough damage. Fly alone is not their target. Oh, like, absolutely. They'll take not, this if it's... they can't find anybody else, and it should be a quick and easy they kill. They gotta try and transition that into pressuring the tier one tower, but then of course, No Tail just shows up halfway through doing his jungle, and we'll be able to put a stop to it. If they could have gotten No-Tail and slowed down that Blink Dagger timing, that would have been great, because as you said, No-Tail, um, because they're running two cores, they have two cores they can depend upon to actually provide tempo to this game. So in that case, it's all up to No-Tail. Oh, and No-Tail's going to get gone on as DDC. He did not expect that. Yes, they're so big, but LGD willing to commit early five-man rotations caught no tail by surprise. The tier one tower in the process. Tyler is getting so much out of all of these mini engagements they're getting into right now. He shows up at bottom, Miracle. Just trying to scare him into popping the Shadow Dance, but not gonna bait. And GD's movements just look a lot more crisp this time around. With that. Yeah. Kind of, kind of adjusting the, the playstyle in it is kind of interesting how we're seeing teams um, do this kind of two core, but they have to be fighting cores that are able to do something uh, relatively early on. So we're still keeping the, the pace pretty high, but we're also making sure that we still have mid to late game power as well. Oh, No Tail, nice two man Fisher there. They are going to go for MMY. Siler would have been the better pickoff, but I don't think No Tail felt comfortable going for that one. He just would have been stunned up underneath the tower. So gets the easy kill on the support. I think the biggest difference for LGD, in all honesty, is that this time around, ROTK is getting involved early on and setting the tempo. He was pretty critical in the mid-kill, uh, he was able to help out at top as well, and in what? the other two games that I saw him, I felt like he was just completely phased out, and he focused way too much on his own farm. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have actually been down with, I thought about the Hand of Midas didn't change, it wasn't too bad, but... I really like Hannah Midas and Nature's Prophet, but it looks like ROTK is going straight for the early stats. We have seen plenty of Nature's Prophet pick up the Hannah Midas, and it really doesn't slow down their timing that much of whatever I they go for. Bottom ROTK is going to get gone on, but shouldn't lead to too much. No. 
do you agree with ROTK's builds? Is this something about this game and the way that LGD are trying to force things so early that makes the stat more prevalent? Uh, most soft laners are going for this build. Like the phase into the drums immediately after. It just yeah. allows you to fight really early on. It doesn't hard commit anything. You can still transition out of this build really easily. Mm -hmm. It just makes it so that it's tough to kill you. And on top of that, it makes you uh, a good to get kills. Like this gives you a lot of free damage that you normally wouldn't have as Oh, those stunts land at the exact same time. Miracle's just baiting out. He's like, if you want to try and Omni slash, uh, Omni slash me, go for it. I still have that Shadow Dance, and it's left two, in fact. He's going to be right back up to full HP, and this really hurts. LGD, every single time they go for one of those ganks, they know it's not a guarantee, and that's really just the danger of dealing with Slark, and it seems to be OG's playstyle in general. We were talking about uh, so much about how Spectre, uh, not enough to kill Fly. How their playstyle, where it just seems really hard to gank these heroes, and the only hero they can go for is really no tails mid when yeah. it comes to ganking. But the Slark just seems to fit in their wheelhouse in that regard. Exactly. And then you've got Moon playing a hero like Lone Druid, where it takes multiple heroes to try mm -hmm. to knock down just because of the Savage Roar. That, I mean, that's the trend that I noticed immediately on, and it's, it feels like they're caught, like, over and over again for themselves. If No Tails or Miracle something difficult to gank, Give no tail something can create space regardless of how many times he dies and put him in a similar situation and you're fine. But you say in a way it's kind of like hedging yourself against the aggression that was kind of um, set up rather early by some of these teams like MVP or perhaps even just even before the tournament started. And some of these teams was that something that perhaps the aggression started and this is their way to kind of hedge their bets against it, just make it really difficult to gank. Yeah, and I think it's also just. Uh... It's like a really safe and comfortable style for them. Yeah, it's very like, reliable way to play. Yeah, right? exactly. That's the biggest thing is that tournaments like this aren't a sprint. It's a marathon. Mm -hmm. So you need to set up these kind of easy to follow game plans for your team so they know what to do when things go bad. The biggest thing that you should think about is while Moon dies, he knows because they've run the strategy before, I'm good. I know somebody on my team's getting farmed. That person's miracle. I'll be fine. MMY is going to be picked off by the uh, hasted... Bat Rider, that's just no fun to deal with. A mid Bat Rider that picks up a haste, what are you gonna do? They uh, give the kill to crit too, and at the same time, yeah. Miracle actually gets a solo kill. They managed to dive the tower and pick up the Nature's Prophet. He actually started TPing out underneath that Slark uh, Shadow Dance. But when the TP was cancelled by LGD, decides to stick around and is going to try and pressure that tower. See if he can take that tier 1. They really don't have ways to deal with him, by the way. I'm looking at their lineup. In the first game, I think the first game they might have even had better ways. Oh, Siler's actually going to go for Miracle because he knows that the Shadow Dance is down, but a Blink Dagger pick up. Oh, Miracle, you sneaky devil. Oh, Siler's you. still going for it. Siler's still trying to, but he's now running the Dagger. Oh, Miracle just got to get to the trees, but the Fury and all comes out. That's enough extra damage. LGD just were surrounding that Slark. They knew how all important that kill was, and maybe Miracle shouldn't have stuck around to try and pressure that. That was just perhaps a bit greedy showing the enemy that you didn't have uh, Shadow Dance anymore and sticking around like that. And they've got the triple drums now by LGD. I really like this move. They talk, took down the bottom. Was uh, it Alliance that had triple drums as well? I can't remember what I it think was. it was. They took down the tier 1 bottom, which everybody does for the Radiant safe lane. You never want to be there if you can. And LGD oh. off the back of that kill, they know OG's lineup is not built to deal with this Roshan mm -hmm. attempt. Can they do... Got a Slark who's dead. Uh, I really want three jumps though. Like, I'm down with two, but we have gone like, uh, I don't know, like maybe straight into the S and Y or something. Uh, I know it's a little, uh, I know it's a little weird going straight S and Y after. Maybe that, ROTK but... should have gone like. We're not really looking for straight 5 on 5 engagements though. Yeah. I feel like that's a terrible idea, especially against a lone druid. You give him so much space. Look what, alright, look what's happened in, uh, and why this style works out so well. So. How much did they commit to the Miracle? Well, they're committing to DDC right now, so we'll talk about that in a second. And Siler is actually going to TP in. They're not just going to let this be a one-off kill on DDC. They're going to try and defend it, but the cask. Oh, that's a bad position that is actually causing No Tail so out? many troubles. They managed to get the hex off onto Siler. He's staying right on top of No Tail. He desperately wants the kill, and he's going to get it too. Thanks to that Aegis, he can free all out here on OG, and he's going to be able to go for crit as well. Takes him out with a magic missile. Moon positioned himself to hit on maybe, but I don't think that's going to be able to do much unless Miracle can come in. He takes out the Spectre. There goes that Aegis and maybe pops his Invis rune. Miracle may not have been expecting that one. 
He's got the pounce, being body blocked up by maybe, but LGD are going to call it quits there. They definitely won that engagement. That was a very good. Uh, the casket, man. That, that paralyzing cast did so much work. They wanted to be able to get that nature structure a lot earlier than they did, but it was not an awful trade for OG. Is It could have been a lot worse. That moon is steadily getting towards that radiance, but as I was saying, so they take a lot of time to try to kill Miracle, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the game plan of OG. Like, waste time trying to kill this guy who's nearly, nearly unkillable. And, and then... he's got Midas anyway, so his farm progression is guaranteed, right? Exactly. So what ends up happening on the other side of the map, Moon just continues to farm. So you've got these two cores that are farming on polar opposites of the map, and both of them require minimum three heroes right. to be able to kill. So now you just open up one, one side of the map for one hero, or the other side of the map for the other. It's like a really smart strategy by OG overall. It's really hard to play against. Everything that you have to do from LGD side then to be crisp. Every gank that you go for where it takes you like multiple heroes, it has to work out for you. If you fail, you just give all that space to the other core on the exactly. other side of the map for nothing. The other important thing is to when you get those kind of successful pickoffs or successful team fights in this case, Pressure down those towers. Make sure that OG don't have the same kind of control of the map where they can put one hero on one side of the map and the other far off on the top side. Yeah. Here's the trade right now, though. LGD are saying, screw it. We're going to give you farm moon. We're just going to go for objectives, though. We know that you're not ready to fight us. This is the downside of OG's draft, I think, is if teams play this quickly and they have the heroes that can kind of push down without worrying about the 4v5s, they feel good. Yeah, we, we're actually watching... Um, game and we're talking about like perhaps the lack of push at some point in time like maybe replacing the lion with the shadow shaman like yeah. that would do something more for their lineup could you say the same about OGs because one of the downsides is when they get the space to push anything but the lone druid is not actually able to take time oh DDC at top miracle is thinking about it right now he's got the shadow dance too he could this yeah, pretty quickly. Jumps in. DDC to voodoo restoration but it's not gonna do much quick he ends up dying and miracle that shadow dance to make sure he can stay ahead of the Venge Spirit and not get swapped back. I think this time around, though, they're a lot better off than Archon was at any point in the game. Like, OG's sure. got uh, Lone Druid. Lone Druid almost alone is kind of enough to deal. And they've got Slark is not that bad. You don't want him to be a centerpiece, but he can be, just because LGD don't have anything that immediately kill him. They don't have a line of their own or anything that can pop him for the shadow dance. Almost every ability that LGD have is disjointable by the Slark. I think the Wish Doctor cast follows you no matter what, but that stun's almost negligible as long as you're not standing next to somebody. Pick up here, Crit at 18 minutes is able to grab his Blink Dagger, and he's got the three levels of Aftershock. He doesn't even max out Fisher just to make sure that he actually can get a combination. You need level three of Aftershock to oh, actually get Oh, this is so Fisher. smart by OG if they can get there in time. LGD, though, they're they going to be a little bit this. faster. Moon, the spin goes out. They're actually going to be a bit slow in getting onto Moon, especially with that roar. He may end up dying here, but OG... Oh, the Fisher goes out. It's not going to be enough. Fly misses his stun entirely. Crit jumps in now. Echo Slam onto two, but it's not that good. He doesn't actually control the heroes all that well. Maybe does end up going down, and Miracles now made his debut into the fight. DDC lets go of that Death Ward. He pops the Shadow Dance and will be able to take out DDC. Turns back, looks for ROTK, thanks to Fly. That will be possible. The TP ends up being canceled and OG do punish LGD successfully. I thought their rotation was just going to be a bit too slow, but of course, the heavy commitment by LGD to kill Moon is uh, pushing them too far into the tower, and OG pounds pretty quickly. And that's exactly what OG are banking on, that it mm -hmm. takes so long to kill Moon that they can almost always get there. That's just a really well-read situation by them. They know by this ward over here and the bottom one, like, they can just always infer where LGD is going to go. That's going to be really hard to read, right, from an enemy position. You're looking at this and going, oh, they're they're giving up on the lone druid when we're ganking him with three heroes. You know, the, it's just creating space. But then at a certain point, OG flipping on you. Yeah, exactly. The whole table and like, no, 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 we're not actually giving up the lone druid. It's just constantly evolving your strategy more mm -hmm. than anything. The good news, though, for LGD, and I feel like we're talking about OG strat too much, but it's mainly just because I find it pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty neat to think about, but uh, LGD have done this really well. The fact that they're keeping up in this game at all against the kind of style and adapting in the best of three this quickly is pretty insane. They've almost got, they've actually got the Radiance on the Spectre themselves, so they've just hit their own item timings, which OG are going to struggle with. Heroes like Lion that have 800 HP, the Earthshaker who heavily relies on the Blink, 
Uh, these yeah. heroes are really gonna suffer. And they've got their Radiance uh, picked up ahead of Alone Druid. This is an opportune time for LG to actually force a fight. Um, they know that Echo Slam is on cooldown for 45 seconds. They can see that the Radiance isn't up yet. This seems like a really great opportunity for them to go. And LGD are trying to force it in. Oh, no tail stumbles right into that trap too. The Omni Slash bounces over the creeps and he does get MMY up on the cliff, but it doesn't seem to matter. Crit's almost dead practically from the Spectre alone. Did get the uh, the Lion, it looks like. Farther down, must have been Spectre killing Yeah. I almost feel like if he was really quick, he could have gotten both of them. Like the... Earthshaker was really low in that fight, but look how effective that spec haunt is at this phase of the game. Almost no, none of the, neither of the supports can survive against it. OG supports are kind of just food to him right now. And even though the Slark is still ahead, you would much rather have the Haunt right now, just because of the dual purpose that it gives you, canceling the blinks. GD, I think, really see their timing blooming at this point in time. If they actually come the uh, SNY for Juggernaut, and they have this Radiance on Spectre. It seems like th those two like kind of fighting style cores have just reached one of those peaks where you just can't fight them for the next five or ten minutes. And Silo or Top tries to make it go on the bear, but it's impossible to kill. This is a really fast Scotty. <laughs> 21 minutes Scotty for me. I will tell you now, Cap, none of the supports in this game will enjoy themselves. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do? They pop the Ghost Scepter, it only lasts so long, the swap goes down, Miracle just stays right on top of that support. But if they can actually lock down Miracle, stay ahead of him, don't let him pounce away! He's getting to the trees, trying to get over, he does get on top of the cliff, and then actually pursue him. Now they get the lasso, as well as that Lion Finger. Maybe he's actually gonna go down here, Miracle comes back and strikes. Able to pick up that kill, double there. Now they're gonna go for the triple. DDC has been blocked out by the Fisher. Miracle jumps on top of him as well. He's gonna go from having a Scotty at 20 minutes to having some fresh item by 25 with the way this fight is going. I just right now the Slark is gonna go unchecked because there's almost no way to hard lock him down. The only way is that if Miracle messes up, but his team did a really good job there. Like OG responding to that. LGD thought for a second there was gonna be an opportunity there. There probably was. But they just lost a little bit too much. Bliff up the mid as Silar is here to defend, but I don't want to be careful as he does have the haunt available though. Seem pretty desperate to almost try and save that tower. Considering how aggressively he was positioned, knowing that OG were still... And OG... You know, they're in this they mid tower, slam. they're gonna make they the go! They want to be able to pop Siler, but a nice swap still though, Miracle stays on top of him. Siler will end up going down, he still has that Shatter Dance, maybe he's gonna try and stick on top of him with the spin. Miracle has the pounce, makes a quick right turn, and will be able to get over, oh, but a nice death, death ward! Beautiful play there, they get a little bit more damage, he has the Maldiction on him as well! He has another oh pounce, but it's God. not gonna be enough, LGD! That was a beautiful trade-off that they desperately needed, expertly well played. That was one of the coolest... Non-flashy plays, if that makes sense at all. <laughs> Casually throwing a death ward on with the thanks to the ether lens. That's all the way to that high ground. That's so insane. Oh, I'm so impressed right I now. I mean, he needed that damage too, because the maledict was yeah, just that, knocking he was anything. gone that if was he didn't make that maledict. play. He was gone if they didn't make that play, and that's a huge pickup for them. Oh boy, that was that was big. So maybe not going for S and Y, right? This has got to be something else. He's got 2,800 golds. Is some sort of like um, what, what's really necessary for him in this game? Maybe I was thinking. Is the do you pick up the early BKB at all in this kind of game? Or I is don't that think so. Not a. I think you're okay with just like the spin plus your Omni Slash. Mm -hmm. I think if when you get a BKB on a hero like Jug, it's to protect the rest of your investments. So you'll get it near the end. Because most of the time, it's just about utilizing your ultimate and your spin. Mm -hmm. in the so early you games. still need probably two more items before you can. Yeah, I would. I, I would like to see at least one or two more items before he picks up something like that. But man, this game is. You know, I. I'm not gonna lie. I really counted LGD out coming into the series, and after the first game, and yeah, most after of the first second game, game, that looked pretty nasty. Yeah, and most of the second game, it just looked like OG was gonna stomp. But LGD, if it feels like they're just like revitalized into the second game, and it's just still heavily OGs when it comes to. Um, XP and net worth is like 4k. This is a doable situation for OG or uh, for LGD. Our man smoke up from OG. Fight was not the greatest for them. Living the bear push out mid. I'm not sure if they're like trying to bear right now. 
seems like it. No tails going to the secret shop area, but this is kind of the tail end of their smoke. They will be able to find something here. It's going to be maybe MMY couldn't quite get the swap, but I don't think this really matters. They don't want to really be getting into this fight anyway. OG were not grouped up very much. Now Fly and No Tail are going to have the cats bouncing back and forth between the two of them. Looks like No Tail is going to be able to get away. Our eventual spirit is pretty much stuck behind enemy lines. Lion is going to go down chased away oh, and Siler, so well low. Siler is gonna go down he managed to get taken out by the bear moon wants to be able to get out of here though this is LGD the rest of them still look very healthy the pick off on the specter was nice and they managed to trade it for their two supports but they can't really continue to engage and uh, LGD shouldn't want to anyway they've got to defend top lane where miracle was going at it oh it is gonna be the BKB by the way for maybe and <laughs> look at miracle just like turn around for half a second to try to bait but the you want to go for the Omni? So what what does that tell you? Because of the fact that this is uh, perhaps not a typical timing about a BKB on Juggernaut, what, is that, what does that tell you about what LGD think they need to do in this game? Probably just mm, that the Jug isn't going to be like a true two position. Or like the time when I see these kinds of like dual ones mm -hmm. as uh, it, started, it was like it started with MVP Phoenix, right? Yep. And then China just seemed to kind of pick that on mass. But uh, most of the time... It's more of like a true, like a shared one position almost, not even like a two. It's, uh, with maybe, it feels like he's saying, okay, I'm gonna be the person getting up there so that Siler can live, and I need more than just the spin. Like most yeah. of the time, you'll see him grab at least like one or two side items. It's really rare, I think. Uh, for the BKB jug to come out like right after the Yasha, he's got to be both a frontline hero. And he also needs to make sure that they win, they win these next couple of fights, yeah. or at least don't lose them against OG. Otherwise, the Lone Druid is really going to start kicking into play. He's going to rapidly evolve from Radiance Vlads to an AC, which is where I, I would say a certain peak for Lone Druid. Yeah. Oh, and the Swap's no going to instantly cancel that, but... Yeah, that's not going to work out too well. Go Miracle's going to be able to get initiation onto ROTK, who does have a Shadow Blade, so he'll be okay. Miracle's going to take a bit more damage, still has the pounce, as well as his ultimate out. Be sure block, and LGD will not pursue here. So patient with that Shadow Dance. I feel like I would have just popped it almost immediately mm -hmm. when he was in the Sprout, but LGD was trying to bait it out. Uh, I think the Slark is just better, though, than the Sprout. This kind of game. I think the Slark pretty much go unchecked until somebody grabs something like a hex. But if you notice, almost nobody from LGD is building towards more control or anything like that. Right. They're building primarily for survivability. So the Slark is just going to get better and better. And the Lone Druid is pretty much going to mirror, if not get bigger than your Spectre. So I almost feel like LGD just have to take these fights early on, especially since ROTK is not getting the amount of farm that he needs to to become another core for his team. You probably just keep taking fights and hope that the early game investment was worth it. Trance, feel that Roshan's around that half HP marker. If LGD want to go, they've got to go soon. They don't have the Spectral Ultimate. They do have another Spectral Dagger, though. Throw it inside the pit. Get a little bit more information. And now LGD are going to start making oh, their Siler, way. Oh, Siler, are you really going for this? Interact at the same time as Roshan goes down. Aegis, it's on the deck somewhere. They managed to... Oh, God, the Echo Slam, it's still there. Somebody pick it up. Siler, yes, he gets it towards the tail end. He'll be able to turn onto crit. Miracle's trapped up onto the trees. He pounces himself back down. Siler's almost dead here, but Miracle just can't get his hands on him. And it's only the Aegis anyway. He picks up the Ring of Quill and managed to Shadow Dance his way back out of that one. Save the ring, he says, and will be able to escape into the tree. LGD on hot pursuit here, but it just doesn't seem like they're gonna catch anything either way though That was still a beautiful win there as I'm not sure how they managed to keep that Aegis out of the hands of OG for so long I thought for a second OG had it guaranteed because the Earthshaker Fissure even went down, but yeah, yeah Maybe it pushed him to the other side. I'm not sure everybody was pinging it I think crit even pinged it and said oh, yeah, he did he said Aegis is the immortal drop here He was like trying to tell his team like, anybody pick it up. Like, I don't even care at this point the worst possible thing happened <laughs> Gave it to Silar. Yeah. And Spec is a really good Aegis carrier just because you can use him as the frontliner now and not necessarily just have to immediately haunt in. He's just so annoying to have to deal with the first time around. Mm -hmm. That was such a good opportunity for OG. Should have been just a free Aegis for Slark. How does LG LGD uh, kill him twice? They just don't have the necessary disables to do it twice. But... MKB is now complete. Miracle uh, going for this like. I mean, it started with a Scotty, and obviously it's just going to follow from there, but like immediately going for the biggest late game items that he possibly can. It, what does he go next? Is that um, going to be like an Abyssal Blade next? 
think so. You need some kind of lockdown. You now have something to deal with uh, the Radiance, and Miracle is deciding that he doesn't need the BKB. I think he wants to just continue to build more greedy for more damage. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the right idea. Nobody from LGD has a Hex or anything like that along those lines. And most of the things that you can get rid of are disjointable with the Dark Pack. Vector Ultimate goes out. No tail, or sorry, crit was the target, but uh, had a Glimmer Cape. Glimmer Cape destroy spec. Yeah, because you can't really rely on Ghost Scepter, right? There's a potential for Diffuse Blade to be picked up by either one of these cores. So Glimmer Cape's just the more reliable escape. If you lose a gem once to Inspector, awful. Because you're not going to just carry around dust. Man, things are... I still think OG is in the driver's seat, which is why they're going for the smoke right now, regardless of the... Uh... Yeah, I guess they care more about the haunt timing. Are they going to find ROTK? Yeah, swap back out, though. ROTK is going to be able to get away. They're going to have to content themselves with the kill on MMY, Siler. Good about contesting it there with his Aegis, but he decides it's just not really worth it. Miracle, looking for more. Uh, he just managed to chase away LGD. No need to overly pursue because the top lane, Mu, takes the tier 2 tower. We've been talking about the Sark this entire time, but we've almost just we've almost just completely disregarded the fact that Moon almost has an assault curse, Vlad's and a radiance at 31 minutes into the game. That's just doing him a disservice, honestly. Oh, he has it actually. RTK thinks he can get the pick off here. The Glimmer Cape is buying some time for Fly. No tail gives him a bit more with that four staff and the pushback. Got a point booster. Is that Nags? Is there enough heroes? Like, I I don't see these heroes being grouped up that much that you can go for Ags. The but... Fissure will set it up. Don't worry about it. I guess so. There's no other item he really goes for, right? Okay. AC is just about complete for Moon. Looks like the Slark is going to go for the Moon Shards. Really good item choice, I think. That is a very weird... The reset item piece by ROTK. Fighting Nature's Prophet build. Amen. Smoke up from LGD. Certainly worked out against that Slark. Come on. They are not going to find anyone right away, but if they can you all the way around, they'll catch Moon here. Lead with the spin. Here that uh, Moon isn't able to get a good roar. He's trying to get himself in the best position to scare multiple heroes back and TP away. And it almost, oh, he's almost got oh, no. was going to work. But a swap stops him just in time. He was, like, gone. You see the outline of his body. Not, not. Now with a pickoff, a big pickoff at that. Lone Druid down for 60 seconds. LGD can get a lot of control. They can actually look for one of these tier 2 towers. They can decide to go for the mid one. I don't think Ochi, even if they had the buyback on the Lone Druid, which she doesn't, I don't think he would expend it for just this. And Siler just continues to split up the map because he knows with the Aegis he's fine. Although it just fades right now. And he's got a full Manta style completed now. As main hero. Maybe he has... Blink Dagger and 2200 gold. ROTK has a BKB. They're all in fighting shape right now. LGD want to make the most of this opportunity. 20 seconds. Still the Lone Druid is back up. I don't think LGD have enough time. I don't think so either. I don't think they want to fight into the Lone Druid plus yeah, Slark. If they, if they wanted to try and get that tier 2, they have to like barrel into it immediately. Not going to be a uh, wise decision. Moonshard, complete form, miracles, he tries to scout out, maybe, blinks on him, maybe, counters with his own blink. Found any wards or anything? Nothing like that. Seems like... So far. LGD... They've lost the Aegis, so they don't want to get uh, too aggressive. They've got a gem on themselves and smoke on DDC. Maybe they just smoke up and for these pickoffs, but they've haunt too. I don't know how much bigger they get than this. Walking around with the gem. What in in your head? What is kind of uh, obviously it's not concrete. Always kind of fluid based on game is that. But oh, Siler, get an opportunity to talk about that as we're gonna watch Siler get picked off. That was 
better than the lone droid pickoff that LGD got earlier. Did that feel like it took a pretty long time? Yeah, despite did. the fact that he was like completely by himself and he didn't even get Manta until the end. It's a little bit scary for OG. Yeah. They had to use what finger, lasso, fissure, like still didn't just go down. What's the ideal timing? Like, or rather, what's the latest timing for LGD? Uh, at what point do you go? Or, all right, guys, we really got a high ground pushing at this game before LD and Slark get to. Or is there ever a timing like that? I think LGD have a pretty wide opening for that, just because yeah. spec is always okay in games like this. But man, Miracle just going in doesn't even care. Yeah, jump in, no tail, bouncing around. He doesn't actually have lasso. It's like he's scaring LGD back, and they will be able to get the melee racks because of that one. 20 more seconds till the Spectre. And Jesus. Jump back in, Miracle, okay. Take that lane of racks, and you figure that OG are just going to try and get out without any losses, but Miracle jumps in, forces out a BKB use, um, the Nature's Prophet. Then they finally retreat. This is weird. OG want to continue to fight because they haven't yeah. used any of the cooldowns uh, for this. So they're hoping that somebody comes to solo push this out. And they know there are no wards around the area because of No-Tail and the Slark. Radiance but nobody's baiting right now. LGD is waiting for the full force. They start to run together. Smart idea by them. Now they're going to immediately smoke up. Vanta trying to bait things out, but uh, No-Tail's not taking. Taking the bait. Tier 2, back out. So our next fight is probably going to be around Roshan, which is in a little over a minute's time. They're running as a group right now. They want to grab somebody if they can, but... Like, they're going to be unsuccessful with this. They thought for a second maybe we fight around the Roshan area or right before that. Catch OG unawares. Not gonna happen. 25k on the Slark. You can see OG are up by over 12k on both the metrics. But late game Spectre. Things are always going to be scary for OG, no matter what. This time around, though, they I think they've itemized. Plus, they have the better heroes. Kind of work around. The Omni Slash goes down. The Omni Slash is gonna be enough to finish off No Tail. The Spectre ult, he starts actually going on the moon, may have to turn to fly instead, but he's getting hexed up. They're taking off the Earth Shaker, Siler's down to half HP, pop Manta in order to get out of the roots, but now he's been lassoed up. No Tail reintroduces himself into the fight to make sure to grab the critical carry. The swap goes down, but they're going to be able to run him down the bear. Siler just cannot get away from this one. Even gets the root, the DC's going to get chased down too, as they've got full vision of him, and this Slark just does way too Whoa, much damage. Whoa, get the gem, boys! Oh, they didn't see that one. Nobody cares. Yeah, <laughs> it's just fine. gonna go for Rex. Alright, go, go, go! Straight down mid. We just slide right on through to the bottom lane. Yeah. Force some buybacks. Is... They can just force buybacks and go for Roshan right yeah. now. It's a really bad situation for LGD. Because even when they buyback on the Spectre, it still doesn't have Haunt. Yeah, exactly. So if you go for Roshan, there's actually not a very good way for LGD to contest. They've used the buybacks, and if LGD engage outside their base and they lose this fight, the game's over anyways. This Miracle just jumps in. He really wants the quick pick off on DDC to prevent that death ward. Such a huge impact into the team fight. What a great Fisher on a 3-2. Maybe he's forced into the BKB, but he's having all of his stats stolen away from Miracle. Siler's even going to die. That's pretty much the end of the game right there. That's three heroes down. Miracle keeps on going. The unadulterated aggression out of OG ends this game way faster than you would have thought. Just five minutes ago, you're looking at a relatively even match from OG. OG and LGD, anything can turn around. OG get the one pick off on Spectre and never let go of that advantage. They had too much control in this game. Slark is a decidedly different hero than the Junk was in the last game. Mm -hmm. In the last game, even though OG were up by like 10k, I said that LGD had like a 40% chance to still win before the fight even happened. But mm -hmm. that's because of the type of heroes that they had. This time around, OG had.